Greetings, my name is Mark Daly. I'm an immigration lawyer with Pro Forma Immigration Attorneys. This is a self-help video, a do-it-yourself tutorial. So your US citizen spouse can sponsor for an immigrant spouse and get permanent residency in the United States. So we have a series of videos on how to do that. We're gonna take you step by step and go through this process so that you can do it yourself and then if you want to have a lawyer look it over, you can call us and schedule that. We have a two hour consultation that we provide. There's information on that. So let's jump right into it. So our introduction here, step-by-step -step immigration forms, is this website that may have driven you to this video or Pro Forma Immigration Attorneys, which is also another website. Step-by-step -step immigration forms is a low cost uh, process by which we work with you to review your forms you fill out yourself and we don't represent you in your matter as your lawyer now pro forma immigration attorneys does a different thing we actually go in and we represent you as your lawyer through the whole process and so you have choices on how you want your representation we do both me okay i also do immigration law training i train attorneys who want to get into immigration law usually like criminal lawyers or um, divorce attorneys who want to do that. I have a whole training program that I've been doing for quite a while and uh, works really well. And here's me at the Federal Bar Association. I'm a member of the State Bar of California and also American Immigration Lawyers Association. And I've uh, been practicing law since uh, 2000. So we're going to talk about terms here. And we have our petitioner, which is a U.S. citizen, the beneficiary, which is the immigrant, also called the applicant, that's gonna be the immigrant coming in. And then permanent residency is also called a green card. And then an immediate relative, this is a key term, it's the spouse, parent, or child of a US citizen. And what's true is that the immigration service is more supportive of immediate relatives immigrating to the United States than non-immediate relatives. And we'll show you more what we mean by that in a little bit. So what we're gonna do first is download your forms, and then you're gonna get your documents together. Then you're gonna get your information together, then you're gonna fill out the forms, and then you'll do the assembly and the filing of all the forms, and finally, you will have your green card interview with your spouse. This is how we want you to approach this process. This is how we approach the process, so we, we advise you to do it this way as well. So we're going to start with our forms and you go online with USCIS.gov and go get your forms there. Now these are PDF forms you want to download onto your hard drive and save them and then start filling them out and save them on your hard drive. So I-130, Petition for Alien Relative, this is the first form. The next one is the I-130A, Supplemental Information for Spouse Beneficiary. The other one is the I-485, Application to Register Permanent Residence or Adjust Status. Another one is the I-765, Application for Employment Authorization. Another one is the I-131, Application for Travel Document. Another form you'll file will be the I-864, Affidavit of Support, and the I-955, Declaration of Self-Sufficiency. Also, we uh, recommend you file a G-1145 e-notification of application and petition acceptance, which is very helpful when you're waiting to hear if your application's been accepted or not. Also, a copy of your I-693 medical exam results, and uh, this form is actually filled out by the civil surgeon when you go to get your medical exam. Now, let's talk about the checklist of documents, since those are the forms you're gonna fill out and, and include in your application. We start with birth certificates, and if they're not translated, they need to be with, translated if they're not in English. So we'll need the spouses, both the petitioner and the beneficiary, and all children on either side. Then all current and previous marriage certificates and divorce decrees with translation if necessary. Passport photos, gotta passport photos. got to have passport photos. Two of the petitioner, which gets stapled to the I-130, and then two of the beneficiary, which also gets stapled to the I-130. But the beneficiary is also going to have two for the I-485, two for the I-765, and two for the I-131. Total of eight photos for the beneficiary. All right. Other proof of U.S. citizenship for the petitioner, like a citizenship certificate if they have one of those, or a passport. Copies of all pages of all beneficiaries' passports. 
Why do we do that? Well, because we want the immigration service to see everywhere that person has traveled. This is going to include the visas that are in there and also include an I-94 card, the front and back, or the I-94 printout from the i94.cbp website, and that's listed below. More documents, past three years of the petitioner's IRS 1040 tax returns with all schedules and forms. Copies, abstracts, or transcripts are okay, or provide a statement explaining why you did not file taxes. If you don't have those forms, then you wanna file a letter saying why you didn't do it. Then three recent pay stubs or bank transfer records. If you get money from an employer with a pay stub, great. If you just have self-employed, you just bank transfers or credit card uh, transfers, then we'll use bank records to show your income. And then an employment verification letter written by your employer, and we have a sample of that. Credit reports and lists of assets. Yes, so a list of assets and credit reports are important now for the self-sufficiency piece, and that would be uh, petitioner and beneficiary. Proof of the applicant's education. Again, for the self-sufficiency, we want to show what your level of education is. Proof of applicant skills, work experience, job offers, and income. Proof of applicant's assets or benefits. Sometimes you have assets or benefits that are payable uh, benefits, so we want to document those. Proof of applicant's health insurance treatments and positive prognosis of condition if there's a health problem but um, good health health insurance and if you've got bad health where the treatments are are important for the self-sufficiency piece nowadays copies of all previous applications and approval notices for uscis and or embassy applications so you should have your history of immigration criminal convictions and arrest records if any of the beneficiary that's both of those. Criminal convictions are issued by a court of law. Arrest records are usually issued by a police department or a sheriff's department. Criminal convictions and arrest records for the petitioner, the U.S. citizen. Violent crimes might require a waiver in immigration law today. So the, the petitioner has a violent crime. We want to see that as well. Copies of previous work authorization cards, if any. Proof of good faith marriage, the more the better. This is a big part of the application and you wanna provide the proof that you guys have a good faith marriage. And that's what's gonna get your I-130 approved. So letters from both spouses briefly describing how you met, your wedding, and your future plans. Key, you wanna have the spouse's statements in the package. Three or four letters provide proving good faith marriage from friends and family. Right, so Get the, if your family doesn't write a letter, there's something strange about that. So parents want to write, siblings want to write. You want to let the immigration service know that everyone knows about this marriage so it's not looking like it's done in secret. Proof of good faith marriage, the more the better, includes birth certificate of children. Now that's a really great piece of proof right there. Um, photos of wedding and shared life. Six pictures per page with written date and location below. That's how we like to prepare these as as pages and we like to use color uh, copies as well joint bank account joint credit card account joint savings account the money thing sharing money is a big part of a good faith marriage real estate real estate held jointly a spouse one and spouse two so jointly held real estate is also good faith automobiles and insurance held jointly a spouse one and spouse two lease to apartment held jointly a spouse one and spouse two Health insurance policies held jointly as spouse one and spouse two. Life insurance policies with spouse as a beneficiary. Utility bills with both names on the bill. Wills. Wills are good because there's a legally binding document and it's you can get a will kit at $20 at Office Max or Staples. Fill it out, go to the bank, have them witness and notarize it, and then you're good to go. Fill out your questionnaires before preparing the forms. Right, so we have questionnaires that we use. This is how we like to do it. We like to get all the data, all the addresses, everything, and get the questionnaires filled out. And then take those questionnaires and transfer the information into the forms. It, the forms end up being better, and it, they're more accurate, and it ends up being easier because you have to go back and forth through all the forms. Now you might say, well, I know my address. Why do I have to write my address down? Okay, that's fine, your current address. But then the, your, your addresses for the last five years and the dates of them, do yourself a favor and fill the questionnaires out. 
Now we have intake forms, these questionnaires on our website, which are really great, proformaimmigrationattorneys.com, and they're listed there on Word documents, so you can just actually fill them in. And it's in the resources section, and at the drop-down menu, you'll see them intake forms there. Actually, on the home page, they're there as well. Great, so this is the first step for doing your case, is making sure you have all your documents and information ready to put together your package so that it looks really professional and you know you never get a second chance to make a first impression and your immigration paperwork is going to be read by a human being so you want it to be organized and you want it to be clean looking so the next video is coming up so thanks for watching